Hey, and welcome back to the best thing you watched this week. We've got Chris from Movies and Munchies, myself from the Ruby Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're recurring and you enjoy watching us weekly or listening to us weekly on the audio exclusive podcast, we will be doing an exclusive review on there. I'm excited to talk about the film that we're doing on there this week because Chris has never seen it and I watched it for the first time in a couple of years and I was like, whoa, okay, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're also going to be doing a Patreon, so... I should let everybody know that at the moment you can join our Patreon for one pound, just one pound, and you get a plethora of videos, like at least 40, ranging from skits to movies that we talk about more in depth to quizzes that's all on there. If you want to support us even just a little bit, you know, one pound. Uh, we've dropped it right down because we really want to create a community around there, get people chatting. It's your place. There's different tiers as well where we do like talk about in-depth TV series. If you want to request a TV series for us to review, then you can see that we've done that on the different tiers. Uh, and thank you so much if you are supporting us there. If you're supporting us here, it means the world for us. It helps us keep going. Yeah. But every week we do movie quizzes as well. Uh, and and Chris has yet to be fired, which I'm disappointed is no one's, no one's giving me my job back, Chris. Uh, but uh -oh. okay, okay. <laughs> Let's see what you got for us this week. Anyway, who who won last week? Uh, Nostromo won. Um, it's been a little bit since hey. he has uh, welcome been back, to... Nostromo. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, and it was funny that uh, Chris, who won last week, I believe, he he had asked a question. He's like, "Is there a theme? How do you choose your your movie quotes?" Small uh. insight into Chris's brain. It's whatever kind of pops in. I try, <laughs> like, as I'm thinking of different movies, I do try and like sometimes. Well, there's there's a lot that goes on. Sometimes it's I'm thinking of like a genre. Mm. And so I do, you know, something like that, or maybe even an era, like, you know, mm. some of those, it's not like it, it's hard and fast though, even within that. But mm -hmm. then there's a times where I'm like, you know what? I haven't, I need to focus more on, um, outside of just male comedy and I'm trying to go this way, or I'm trying to do that. You know what I mean? Like, um, in my brain, trying to make sure that I'm hitting a bunch of different genres of the movies, uh, yeah. not just the ones that instantly pop into my head necessarily that I quote a lot from. So, mm. um, I, you know, yeah. Anyway, there you go. So the, the <laughs> winners or the, excuse me, the answers to last week, uh, for anybody that cares or doesn't know, or was just chomping at the bit there, you've got the world's end, mm -hmm. which I still, I mean, smashy, smashy Eggman. <clears throat> that's, that's such a great <laughs> quote. Um, yep. leap year and then snatch. Oh, wow. <clears throat> yes. I think I guessed wrong. I think I guessed lock stock, but I knew oh, it was okay. one, one of those. Yeah, yeah that makes well, sense. Well, see, you right in the right spot there. <laughs> <laughs> but leap year, no clue. Yeah, I wouldn't have got that. Yeah, yeah, that's that one was a little hard. There's some there's some great lines in that movie, um, mm. and probably some more well ones that I should have gone with. But <laughs> but you were like, no, nah, let's nah, make them this. bleed. Yeah. <laughs> make their brains bleed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this week. Um, there is no well i would there it could be comedy i guess maybe as a genre or at least mm. a a a portion of the genre the funnies um, okay fu yeah, yeah i think i think these are going to be extremely easy okay so um okay. and i don't say that to make anybody feel bad if they don't know them that's not it's so, just so you know like hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy when they think of anything in those SWAT has come up and slap him. If yep. they're not easy, I expect you to slap yourself. Okay. <laughs> no, no. These are, these are, uh, these I think are, um, anyway, we'll just go. We'll, I, I don't okay, think these do are it. too obscure. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. <clears throat> the word of the day is job. J O B. Okay. Number two. My mom and dad are going to be so mad at me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. And the last one. It's k k k Ken k k k coming to k k kill me. How are you going to catch me, k k k Ken? <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> uh, I probably got one of those. <laughs> Uh-oh. So you slapped yourself well, twice. It's... No, you have to slap yourself. <laughs> Oh, I have to slap me. You have me. to get slapped because oh. they're not easy. 
<laughs> Somebody slap him. <laughs> Who's listening? <laughs> oh, yeah, Chris will, next week you'll just it'll be I'll I'll take off my headphones and my glasses and I'll beat myself for <laughs> Okay. <fine>. Everybody's <laughs> we, entertainment. We can, we can do Fight Club, right? <laughs> yeah. First rule about Fight Club. <laughs> exactly. Oh, cool. Okay. So yeah, let us know in the comments. Uh, give us your answers. We'll give you a shout out uh, next week. But Ruben, do you have a question for us this week? One maybe that's not going to hurt my head like last week. No, unfortunately, it's going to hurt your head because oh, no. uh, people really enjoyed last week's Arnold Schwarzenegger oh, <laughs> 15. This week, I want Chris to think of 20 Keanu Reeves movies. And you Good should be bored. 10 just off the bat. So I did it because I did it first I, without thinking, without cheating. And I was like, yeah, that's that's doable. So come on, Chris, let's okay. do this. OK, my own private Idaho, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Bill and Ted's Bogus Adventure, Bill and Ted, uh, the last, the, the music the play, the end one. of the music, the, number three. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the Matrix, The Matrix, uh, two, three, and four. <laughs> <laughs> um, point Break. Yeah. Um, ooh, Always Me Be My Maybe. Oh, nice one. Okay, so this is like that. Um, John Wick 1, 2, and 3. I want to say John Wick 4 because that's coming up. I mean, very it's soon. made. It's like it, 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 it's done. It exists, right? Yeah. I'm seeing it this week. Some people yes. have seen it. So, oh, oh wow, lucky yeah. them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait for it. <laughs> Dracula, nice. Bram Stoker, Bram Stoker's yeah. Dracula. Okay, five. Okay, left. So five more. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Whoa. this hurts. Dude, come on, did, did. <laughs> He's got so many more that. He's got so is he many in River's great Edge? ones. Is he in River's Edge? No, I don't think so. I don't, unless we're thinking a different movie. I'm thinking a River Runs Through It. That's not him. No, 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 no. This is I don't uh, know with River's Kristen Edge Glover. Is. No idea what uh, that movie is. You look it up to see if he's in that, so I don't <laughs> okay. cheat by right. that. Yeah, The River's Edge. Um. We'll see if that one counts. Um, dang. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah, he's in is there. Is he? Yeah. Nice. Okay, so four more. Everybody okay. in the comments is like yelling at me now, or you're right. Yeah, you're there's watching, a few. You're like, I can't believe you've not even said yet. <laughs> you're naming them, and I'm like, what the crap? Um, uh, knock, knock. Nice, obscure one, cool. Yeah, um, very disturbing and weird. Mm. Um, <laughs> these are obvious ones too that I haven't named, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what in the world? Why am I? Shoot. Dude, I, uh, how many okay. you got left? I got three left. Okay. Um, there was a remake of one of his most, one of his best films, and it was awful. It came out like in 2020. It's got two words. Uh, oh, I already said Point Break. Oh, did you? Yeah. I don't remember you saying that one. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, there was a classic 90s action film. Uh Oh, there's one with him and Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Um, chain reaction. Chain reaction. Okay. Okay. I got. I got the actor. You I got, knew who got, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's not the one you were talking about, though, was it? No, no. The <laughs> Johnny Mnemonic. Oh yeah, that's that's not the one I was talking about. Yep, but that's one. <laughs> no, this one is a um, famous actress with him. It's not a rom com. It's an action movie. Oh my gosh. Oh, so then we have uh, we have Lake House, which is actually Speed Three, um, <laughs> Speed Two, and Speed One. There, no, he wasn't. He wasn't Speed Two. Oh no, that was Jason Patrick. Yeah, so that Speed, was an awful. Speed film. One, and then Lake House. That's a um. Those are the a, sequels a nice, there. The sequels. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay, I uh, named them all. Yeah. You named it I all. I can't believe I didn't do Speed. What yeah. the crap? I can't believe you didn't do the Devil's Advocate. 
oh my gosh what? <laughs> see see this is oh gosh that was a good one okay it's everybody in the comments game. like <laughs> and like there's just, more yeah oh yeah of course yeah. there are but mm. just let it come on let, lay me out <laughs> just because <laughs> as you're watching this you're probably chris how can why you did, not why did it you say that but yeah uh oh dude did I you like, know oh, yes. that he was hank hank in in the neon demon i haven't seen the neon demon so yeah. no i did not okay. know that oh uh, well he was in that <laughs> okay fair enough <laughs> that that it's it's tough when you're put on the spot but when you're just thinking about the actor you you suddenly go oh, yeah. yeah but then when everybody's looking at you like the world of the internet um yeah go 50,000 <laughs> subscribers <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about well, Chris, uh, i thought you liked movies yeah i know right <laughs> oh gosh yeah, yeah no that's <laughs> you did it though you got it you got it you got that okay <laughs> <laughs> no your brain hurts yes it does for two weeks in a row thank you ruben <laughs> yeah you're welcome yeah that was fun cool so well the title uh, of the show is the best thing the best thing we watched, watched this week i love yeah. dead air that's such it's so attractive it, i know right <laughs> we're just like uh what are we gonna say something now this shows that we are not scripted at all. We yes, <laughs> every is week is very, flying very by the seat of our pants. Um, do you want to start? Sure. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I ventured out to the cinema this week to watch a movie that is hated by all. But <laughs> okay, no. Since then, the score, the audience score has gone up to sixty-one percent. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank so it's it's now goodness. fresh on the on the it's audience fresh score. On the, yeah, but the. The critics just everybody is just pandered and hated it. Is, is it like it's, in the thirties still? It's thirty seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gone up because the first thing I saw was thirty three. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it has gone up a bit, but sixty five is what I went to watch, and I knew what this film was going to be. Mm. I didn't expect anything else from it. You know, it's Adam Driver, um, in a Jurassic Park film with a sci fi element with uh dinosaurs but for me this is the jurassic park film we've been wanting since the jurassic world films has started like this made dinosaurs scary again <laughs> mm, you know nice. uh, i said in my review rex because uh -huh. that's what we call him he's like a friend now because he's yeah. not scary he's helping them you know in some of the other movies he's literally he him and the raptor the are teaming up and you're like oh, i can't be scared of him he's anymore but this one he's terrifying and the mm. whole reason that that works is because a lot of it is less than more there's a lot there's a lot of in the shadow eyes through um leaves you know debris there's a lot of uh, more accurate looking dinosaurs. Someone said in the comments, I mind like, I don't like the way they made the dinosaurs look. I'm, saying, I'm pretty sure that's way more accurate. It's probably because TV and movie TV series have depicted the dinosaurs. Even in Jurassic Park, they're not accurate to how mm -hmm. they're supposed to be. We have gotten more accurate as we've gotten you know used to it. This one, there's some really interesting uh, designs for those dinosaurs, which I love. They were creepy as heck. The raptors are the proper sizes um but also terrifying uh everything on this planet wants to kill you if you think about the jungle parts in king kong peter jackson's king kong you know those worms everything was just yeah. killing them you know that's kind of what you have here but from the tiny bugs that want to crawl in your mouth and like put poison in your mouth sort of thing to uh, the bugs that fly on your neck to mm. the various different types of dinosaurs everything is bred because it's 65 million years ago to look like you know it's just it, it humans don't want to coexist with these guys and what tops it off is there's a, a really good element of time you have to get off this planet because there's a thing that's going to happen um and so you they have to keep rushing so there there is with there's one person that our captain who's crash landed the, the ship, he's going to take this young girl and get her off planet. And there's a really like a significant time thing that they have to get off mm -hmm. in a certain amount of time. They have 15 miles through dense Jurassic age 
uh, to get through. And so that's that's the premise. But that's all I wanted. Like, the, I didn't want anything more. A lot of people went into this film going, is this, you know, the next... I don't know what they were thinking it was going to be. <laughs> it's like, it's it's not Jurassic Park even. When it's set, it's going to be very minimalistic. It's going to be set... He's got kind of a, a few gadgets that are futuristic mm-hmm. um, because obviously he's, he's able to flying a spaceship so you know yeah. you put that two together there are a few plot points or plot devices that make the movie move forward but i didn't sure. mind them like I, I that's just part and parcel with these type of films the fun comes in is when they start building relationship like uh, and it's, it's a minor spoiler but she doesn't speak the same language so they and, and his translator is broken so they have to communicate differently and I thought that was a really nice little add-on mm-hmm. because then it forces them to grunt or gruff or use expressions or draw in the sand. Uh, and all of that was really fun. So in amongst the intensity is them building their relationship. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of loss. There's been a lot of heightened terror. I was amazed at the amount of heightened tenseness that they were able to get in a 12 that's over here and that's because we have the creators uh the writers of a quiet place you got sam raimi as a producer so there's the creative people involved in the project Mm -hmm. i thought did a really good job so i came out and i think most of the people that were in the cinema with me all looked like they had a really good time um so i just feel like the critics went into this especially i saw a lot of notices where people were critics were bummed out because there were no press screenings for this film and so they were like rah, rah, rah. there's no press screenings i'm gonna go spend my money rah, 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 rah. <laughs> and they were like dude that's it's it's a it's, a, it's not a right it's a privilege <laughs> yeah yeah i there are no press screenings for shazam in my area and so I've bought my tickets to see it so going. Yeah. on Thursday. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> that's what you do, right? I mean, yeah. that's I've chosen to do this as a as a gig or side gig at least right <laughs> now. And so, yeah, huh? Do you, well. Let me ask you. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was gonna say it's not the best movie. It doesn't rewrite the genre, but it felt like something that I wanted now. Like if you want a blockbuster action sci-fi movie that is quite minimalistic, smaller budget than the big big ones, but enough to keep you entertained and the monsters were great then i think and it's you know it's like an hour and a half it's oh okay. you're there and you're gone yeah well it um i don't even know what i want to say because like one of the things was when i watched the trailer like i was very intrigued by it i was like "Ooh, this looks kind of cool and then you see the dinosaur the mm. eye which mm. then it like and that was with the the teaser i think okay. and that's when it was like wow is he on earth 65 million years before or is this a new planet you know what i mean like mm, like you didn't yeah. know and mm. that all of that mystique and that mystery was there now the, then the, the full trailer comes out and it tells you and which is still kind of cool because it reminded me a little bit of like prometheus yeah you know that concept it's it still totally feels like an alien planet like all the dinosaurs and everything feel alien because it's so long ago they could we don't know what you know what was totally wiped out um, you know, when there was a an extinction level event, like we just yeah. don't know. Yeah. Do um. Do you get? Do they give us a good understanding of like why they're traveling or where they're For going? For sure, there's like a okay. twenty minute intro about uh, Adam Driver's character, him and his okay. family, the reason why he's in space and why they crashed. Like it's it's all introduced properly, and so there's there is a little bit of like gravitas to his character of what he's gone through. Mm. It starts off quite heavily, quite dark, and probably they weren't expecting that, but yeah, because it's something that's happened, and you know he's not in a good place. Yeah. Until there's a girl that's got to rescue. So that sure. brings into the story the the you know he has a reason to do something. Uh, I like that. I thought that was good. Yeah. Cool. Well, is this um like the other movie that always comes to mind when you think of something like this is that uh just horrendous After Earth. Mm. You know that was like for me I despise that movie because Will Smith was just emotionless the entire time. And the whole dynamic was so difficult to get behind. Like, I didn't care about the characters. And so it just, you know, there was no. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could you could say some of that because Adam Driver is a very hard character in this. But it's the young girl that kind of warms him up. And uh, like 
he's also a, a dad so they're they're that that comes off um okay so there's a protective nature of him trying to protect so it's not him just like with will smith stuck on a spaceship telling the kids you got to be like this emotionless mm-hmm. to be able to get through none of that there is just we're going to survive this together they were they're going to have to rely on each other okay <laughs> yeah so there is there is definitely more of an emotional tie oh for sure to yeah. it okay good yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I, I probably wait until this hits uh, streaming. Mm. Um, but I think a lot of people will. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad though. I'm glad that you had fun because that is. I mean, that the whole reason we go to the movies, right? Exactly. Is to have yeah. fun. So yeah, that was what I wanted. Escapism, and I got it. So. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Cool. All right. Good. Good. Um. So the first thing I'm going to talk about pisses me off that I'm going to talk about it. Um, <laughs> okay. Because for a year. I have harped on this thing should not exist. I'm not excited about it. I, um, I, <laughs> We've been I, having so many conversations about this. And I kept I, telling you, you got it. It's going to be great, Chris. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> Look I, and who's I joined said, the cast. <laughs> yeah, right. And, I, sa- and I, I, I said, I will still see it. So I was able to go to um, a press screening this week. So I saw Scream 6 a couple days early. I loved it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I, 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 okay. I still don't believe that it really should exist. I mean, but, but <laughs> the level of tension and anxiety and just intensity that this movie carries, mm. at least through the majority of it, is really good. There are, um, I mean, the misdirections that we get are, I thought were great. There was a line for me that kind of clued me in to a reveal, but it didn't solidify it for me. It just made me go, oh, wait, that was kind of weird. What does that mean? Hmm. And then it just, you know, the story keeps going. And so um, the the kills are brutal. They are just, wow. They don't, I mean... We've seen, I mean, we expect the violence, right? Of course, when we see yeah, these movies. Screwed. This is kind of why you go. That escapism mm. that, you know. And these, though, they went like, let's. Okay, let's, so let's, something that was worrying me, maybe you can put my fears sure. to rest, is that guns play a part in the, the killer being using guns. And that feels like it's no longer Scream. Uh, how, it, how does that work? It. Well, the one that we see in the in the trailer, mm. it actually ha- it happens organically. Okay. So it so it totally makes sense. Um, right. Ghostface in this is more brutal, okay. I think, than mm. than we've seen most of the time. Mm. Um, yeah. So it, it does make sense. It's not. Um, I, I can see what you would say. You know how you'd. Oh my gosh! So now the the killer is this gun toting um, mass killer versus stabby stabby, and <clears throat> no, but what we see um, absolutely makes sense in the context of the scene. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, in terms of story, is there one? Yes, and okay. actually the um. Y- yes, because <laughs> I'm not going to. And, gonna and be a lot of them, I like them because I like the, the returning characters, and I just want them to survive. But the stories are laughable. Like the, yeah, this one, I mean, the story, the story makes sense in what it's mm. telling. It, it fits with um, with what we're being shown. But then you have the um, the characters that have come from the last movie mm. into this one that really. Um, I mean, they make it. It brings a lot of heart to the nice. story. What so, about Neve? Like not having Neve in the movie, do you miss that character? Um, there in the story as we get it now, there mm. is no spot for her. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, it would have like it, as the story it is right been so now. So forced, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, it would. She would have been shoehorned in like like crazy. <laughs> so I would not. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't want her in this movie. Now, how would the story have been different had she been in it? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, 
But okay. yeah, but now, I mean, there is a line she has mentioned, Sydney has mentioned, but it it makes sense. Okay. So, yeah. Um, the I think there is a lot. We've talked about this on other movies as well. There is a lot of character protection. Right. Um, they only die at certain points when we want them to die. Yeah, yeah. And just like in the first, uh, well, Scream 5, mm. you know, um, I think Courtney Cox was the one stabbed in the stomach or something like that. And then <laughs> yeah, she's just so kind of sitting on the. She's suddenly <laughs> sitting on then she's fine. Yeah, on the ambulance. Her tummy, yeah. There yeah, is that in this also. Like, right, okay. like sometimes you get slashed on a spot and you're like bleeding profusely and it's like really bad. And then other mm. times you. You should not even be alive at this point, and the character is. <laughs> Literally, so, should be wearing a shirt. Sorry, I've got writer's protection. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. So you have to know that that's part of it. Um, mm -hmm. It does. I think it does weaken some of it, like, you know, here and there. But as mm. the enjoyment overall of the movie, I don't think that that's harmed by that. You just kind of accept it. In some of these types of things, like well, they're gonna they're gonna be protected for at least a little bit, right? Um, the like every scream movie, you know, you have that opening sequence. Nice, um, the kill. And this one is yeah. like it executed very very well. Let's just say that awesome. it was like yeah. that is okay, okay. Not nice. Um, yeah, so this is um yeah, I was absolutely surprised. Um I loved a lot of the characters. Um the story makes a lot of sense for the most part. Okay. Um, so when know, they it, mention the next one coming out, are you going to be like, "Yes." I <laughs> I Honestly, like you look at this and the way this ends could could continue on, mm, but okay. I don't think I would like the direction that it would take if they okay. go with how it like how it ends. could be. Right. But it, it it wraps up also nicely so that if there's not another one, this feels like a good cap to the franchise. Like it's just it so I because the director's been talking about um bringing the stab films to life that would be funny but but yeah. see but we've already seen scream so i've also seen scary movie so yeah. even if you made it a parody yeah yeah i think they just need to go like because they did um ready or not mm, also that was awesome we, talk about i mean you know blowing my socks off because it was mm. so unexpected and yeah. what they brought to it it, it fresh it just yeah, it, it did feel fresh yeah that's what we need we need more similar kind of genres but just do your own story with it you don't have to follow the same thing i understand it, ip brings people back so it's almost guaranteed money yeah 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 well, this one, um, as much as it would, uh, I mean, I have to swallow my words and I have to, you know, admit <laughs> that I was, that I was wrong. This is an excellent movie. I mean, it is a lot of fun. It, I don't know how it's going to be on rewatch. Will it mm. hold up, uh, you know, a second time? I don't know. But, but I tell you what, the first one, I mean, there were points where I was like, oh, <laughs> because you're like, the violence is so abrupt at oh. different point, you know, and you're like, even though yeah. you know something bad is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You're not you necessarily or how. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So it's um, yeah. You wanna if you if you're gonna see this movie, you definitely want to try and see it as quickly as possible. I think because um, spoilers are gonna start to come out, mm. and it that's that's just a bummer there because you don't want this is one of the, you know these are one of the ones that you have to. You don't want spoilers for this one, yeah. No, no. Even if you can figure it out as it's going on, at least you're there for it, and it hasn't been mm -hmm. like you don't know it going in because it changes then the all the excitement yeah. of it. Um, so yeah, there are. It's not perfect. It's not flawless. Um, you know, you could. There's some glaring errors. There's some pieces that you could just like you know niggle at that are like, oh well, I'm gonna I want to focus on this as a as a negative. Even though in the grand scheme of things, it's not really, you know, but it doesn't. I mean, most movies are not perfect. So uh, lots of fun. I was wrong. This is an <laughs> excellent addition to this. I, I think, I think honestly, for me, this would be, um, 
and also a huge caveat of never seeing four and um, not remembering three and you still haven't two. seen four. No, why? I don't what. But why? Because <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Well, it may be, but I just uh, you know it's not high <laughs> on the priority list. I haven't seen any of them other than the original Scream. Mm. Um, I haven't seen the other ones that I have seen of those yeah. for years and years and years and years. Wow. So I really like this franchise. I've seen I've seen all of them multiple times. Mm. Yeah. Well, I would put I would put five and six pretty high up, and I think I think I like six better than five. I'm pretty actually I, I I'm pretty sure I do. Oh yeah, I, I wasn't a huge fan of five. So mm. so yeah, it, it was it was like I had fun. I think on rewatch or at least on like later down the road, my feeling for it waned. Mm. So yeah, but okay. um, yeah, well, I've still hasn't see seen it. it, so I'm gonna venture out. Cool. To see, the problem is my wife doesn't like scary movies. So. <laughs> the, and this one is the this one is definitely um, yeah, it's up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. So what else you got? Yeah. So uh, Netflix dropped the second part of <clears throat> the Glory. And uh, I know you watched the first part, the first eight episodes, and we were both talking about it. We've done an in-depth uh, spoiler review on our Patreon, mm -hmm. which you can go check out now for a pound. A pound. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wasn't sure whether it was going to hold up because it was so good, the, the, the first eight episodes. I went intentively going, oh, my gosh. Now, I would say I do feel like it. it is dragged. I think they could have finished the story quicker. I don't think they needed to spend as much time as they did showing us all the aspects. Also, it's a very complicated story. There are many tangents, many characters with complicated names. You're reading uh, all the time, so you're trying to read and then catch up what's going on screen. There is a thread of an arc that splits into six different stories, and those different stories connect into each other and then sometimes thread back then you jump backwards and forwards in time which often you can't tell because it's only rarely do they tell you what date it is they're suddenly back and they don't look that different you just suddenly you could realize oh wait that character's dead so yeah we're back in time again so there is that more so in this the second half however i still thoroughly enjoyed it i was still rooting for the characters when uh they finally got some of their comeuppance um not as much as i wanted like i still feel like the the how it came to fruition i felt like the bad guys were so bad they needed more bad things to happen to them uh, unfortunately that's not the way the world works but the intricate plan of it and how it ends i was like cool without doing spoilers i don't want to say it's a happy ending or a bad ending i just want to say i was okay with it i, I finished it this is this is on my list as well so nice. i agree it it became not and i don't say this as a negative but it did become very convoluted mm. it was there was a lot going on yeah. um there was one thing that did stand out to me that felt like it started to go off the rails a little bit and mm -hmm. it it delved into the supernatural ish i noticed that just a tiny bit J just a little bit see, and i'm like w see you've been grounded and i'm okay yeah. with 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 belief you mm -hmm. know what i mean and like the the faith that they have surrounding this but they kind of dived pretty headlong into it yeah for a there scene. was a, there was one she said something that this so and so has been with me blah 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 and mm -hmm. then later on because that was like oh, okay well maybe she believes that and then later on it was like but this happened and i was like what no <laughs> well, you've and, never and, been that nothing like that has been established <laughs> already <laughs> yeah that was the that was the glaring part to me and and the other thing was though that that character had been shown to kind of be a fraud you know what mm. I mean? Like, like more about money and show. Oh, I see what you mean. And then they were showing that that character was actually accurate. Yeah. And, and you're like, eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the. I want to do it like a dancing. Boom, boom. Do some oh, drums. God, yeah. Jeez. That was. <laughs> oh, it was. I mean, it was. It was a riveting scene. 
Oh, it's pretty creepy. Uh, yeah, it was well done. But I was just, I was like, <laughs> why are we? What? I thought it was a plan. I did too. Yeah. That's exactly then, what I thought it was. When it wasn't, I was like, eh. Yeah, it, it's very clear that it wasn't. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, yeah. but based on, on reactions of people. Yes. Around, yes. We're speaking um, in cryptic. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. It, um, I did like how the pieces were falling into place. Um, some of it felt like it was going out of control, which, mm. which made it more exciting. You know yes. what I mean? Like you have Dong Yoon who is, um, <laughs> she's got this, this very laid out specific plan and order and everything else. But then once it gets to a certain point, she can't necessarily control all of the outcomes. And mm. that's when you're like, Oh, what, what's going to happen here you you can't even stop this now and did you mean for that to happen yet it's very interesting once moon had put her plan into action yeah she kind of had to let go of the reins and see what happened and then seeing what happened you're like wow because I, I was I, there's a moment where another character has something happen to them because of a thing that they put in place and i was like was that really what you planned because how did you know that was going to happen exactly like that you can't have yeah that was just I, it just connected well <laughs> it, it did i think i think the chaos was what was planned not yeah. necessarily the mm. specific actions yeah um the i don't know about you but the the main antagonist in this the main villain like she's i great. want her she's to a great die main villain because you hate at, her <laughs> every moment she's on screen i mean she's mm. psychotic yeah. Like you'll watch her just like sit there and I mean, like just change, you know, Jekyll and Hyde and, and mm. take another iteration of that. And, and her mother's way, like not nearly as bad as her, but she's bad. But like, <clears throat> how did, how did her daughter become this thing that she is? Oh, well, I, see, and if you go back to like the very beginning, I mean, like they, they didn't correct her. They coddled her, mm. you know, cause the dad was pissed that that the daughter was acting this way, but blame the mom. And so the dad is kind of, I mean, he just, he's a terrible person for blaming the mom for the child's behavior when he didn't. But just not being involved in the child's yeah, life at all. Exactly. Like, that's not yeah. parenting. Yeah. No, no. And she, I mean, the mom is horrible as we get yeah, to yeah. see more and more. Yeah, I mean, especially, sure. I mean, it's, you know, birds of a feather type of thing. It's hard not to see how, <laughs> but. But you see, like, they give hints as to some stuff that's happened off screen. And mm -hmm. you realize that what they're showing on screen is just the tip of the iceberg of how horrible these people are. There's, there's a few lines of, like, abuse and stuff that they they just mention. Or it'll just casually be put on in conversation. Or another person that they did. And you wonder how many kids this character, she's been doing that. Or um, that even in her adult, like I thought she had stopped all that, but they showed that there was an assistant when you saw the arms. And I was, I was like, okay, wow, that, that's horrific. And it's, yeah, she, it's not changed. She is just the devil. Yeah. Yeah. She is. Well, and you watch every interaction that she has with people that mm. she deems as less than. But that's everybody. Like <laughs> there's nobody like what a world to live in. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Wow. Um, mm. th so the end, like, I like how the story was uh, reshaping. Mm. And um, do you think there's going to be a continuation? They could. It would have to be a very good story. Um, and there'd have to be more intricate story and a meaning. Because there's just this MacGuffin kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I also don't want them to. <laughs> I want them to finish what they're dealing with quickly and then go have a good life because they could do that. That's something I said in my review. Both characters, our main protagonists who have formed a, a duo of vengeance, they could totally leave and forget it and, and almost leave those people and go and be have a happy life. But someone did mention in my, in my comments, if they had done that, then all the other people that were hurt or abused or still getting hurt and abused wouldn't uh, would still get that if they didn't actually do it because the police weren't doing anything people mm. in responsibility wouldn't do anything so actually vengeance was needed 
because they would just keep it was actually needed you know there's yeah. we need batman because the government has failed you know the, mm-hmm. the cops aren't doing their job and uh the bad guys are winning that's when the world creates these things so i'm batman yeah. the, the still one of my favorite characters is the older woman oh my who, gosh she is my favorite character who helps yeah. her you know and he, yes. at the end you brought eggs didn't you yeah oh my gosh she's crying she she had me in the 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 most emotional moments between her her, and her family what she's going through like moon stuff yeah but i think it was a clever story and showing you and then she she words it herself that she wasn't the only one in pain or getting hurt her life wasn't the only one that you know she's not the only person that's had a rough life when you see the mother trying to do everything to protect her daughter from an abusive husband and there's no way out and a society that benefits men particularly so nothing would ever happen and mm-hmm. uh, you know he's a drunk and he uses all the money but nobody's going to say anything because he's the man of the house it's that sort of culture and here she has no way out she's doing everything she can she's getting beaten daily you're wondering if this last beating is going to be the one that's going to kill her or what's going to happen to the daughter and mm-hmm. then you have the um the evil woman also jumping in and trying to use her and somehow this woman still ends up being happy you mm-hmm. know she brings life and joy to the conversation man i was just all over, like whenever she was happy i was happy because she was able to go over those circumstances and still find joy in life which is incredible well and there's that one point towards the end where she She's been going about her life now for a little chunk of time, um, and and she receives something, and it puts a smile on her face. It gives her renewed per- – and I was like, oh. I mean, you feel a little sad because you don't want her to be mm. utilized in this, but it also gives her purpose now, and, yeah. and it, it, it's something that she enjoyed doing. And Also, she was good. <laughs> she really was. She, yeah. I was like, damn, you should open up a thing that makes yeah. you that – full time because you're very good at this <laughs> yeah oh my gosh i loved it when they would go back and show the the events leading up to another event that we saw with her you know yeah. what i mean and how it, it was a very clever storytelling device because often we were in places like oh no this has happened and then you realize it's part of the plan and they go back they show you and you're like oh great that's awesome <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I I loved her. I thought she was she always made me smile. Mm. Um, it was horrifying this one extended scene, which it went on, and I was mm. like, "Crap!" It was heavy. Yeah. It yeah. So yeah, no, I <laughs> liked I this TV series was not. <laughs> no, it was not. No, no. Um, but really, really good. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> very, very good. So cool. So what's next on your list? I don't have anything else on my list. Um, what? I I watched a couple of other things this week, but they are not worth talking about. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I got one more to talk about. Cool. Ted Lasso. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chris is pissed now. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I haven't seen the whole third season. I've, sure. I've seen the, the first four of season three. It's bittersweet because it's the last season. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also as emotional as season two. Like the first season is comedy gold. Uh, you're getting to know those characters. You fall in love with the Ted Lasso character. There's uh, the, the the club owner who kind of wants to put the club into the ground because she hates her husband. Season two, they kind of come together and form a partnership. And at the end of season two, Nate destroys everybody by going over to West Ham and I'm happy for Nate because he's come out of his shell and he needed to but also what the hell Nate <laughs> like we we helped you get there like I feel like I helped him get there come out of his shell <laughs> um Nate is excellent in this as well in in a heart. yeah yeah because he's kind of the antagonist now right I mean we saw him his progression in in season two was we mm. saw him becoming more and more frustrated and more and more arrogant. I think. Yeah, so and- he's he's still kind of under the thumb of the owner, who's the husband. He's yes. played by the character who played Giles in, uh, in Buffy. Yeah. Mm. 
um, he is definitely the antagonist. Like he steps up a notch. Like if you thought oh. it was a douchebag in the previous seasons, no, he, he's here to, to to stay to irritate you uh, <clears throat> even more. We also get <laughs> a a a new member of the team, which oh. changes up the dynamics quite mm. a bit. One in particular character doesn't like this new person, and so that changes it. They're also the the arc of the story is that they're in the premiership, but. Mm there is all the press people are saying they're going to be losing like they're going to be in the bottom so they weigh the underdogs again and that kind of hurts them because they thought they were finally getting somewhere at the end of season two but now they're in the premiership they're like oh we're still the underdogs so they gotta kind of win again ted is in a difficult place because he doesn't know why he's here like why he's in england why he's still he's He's, it starts off with him having spent some time like the summer with his son and watching his son go back home. And so he, he's definitely split in two worlds still, almost more so because he feels like he's lost his family. His mm-hmm. wife is kind of moving on with her life. We had some of those moments. And you, do you remember when he was having anxiety, panic attacks and was doing this stuff? That's all very prevalent, even though he's getting help from the psychiatrist who he mm-hmm. seems to have an interesting relationship with now. That's all there. Um, and all the players' relationships are carrying on, although they might look slightly different now. Um, you know, we had our new coach, who was a player, because he was asked to come on uh, one of our favorite characters. Uh, what's his name? Roy. Roy. Um, <laughs> dude, like, I, I want to do his lines, but I would just have to bleep for like 10 seconds <laughs> when he goes to he's, his niece's kindergarten <laughs> oh my gosh so he's kind of like that but he's he's having some relationship issues um mm. and he's trying to deal with not being a football player anymore which is interesting because he's a coach and that dynamic is different yeah uh, but there's such heartwarming moments like which is you know not massive spoiler but when they walk out on the pitch for the first time and roy's there as the coach for the first time and the fans start chanting his name in the back he's like he turns around just kind of puts his hand up and it's awesome uh there are moments like that that really work the heart of what ted lasso actually is is very much there it's about the characters football's secondary right mm-hmm. uh, yeah. or, or soccer um but it's all about these characters that we've come to love. And so every episode I'm watching, I'm like, yay! But I'm also really sad because they're like, but this is this is like the last time. This is the, this is gonna, this is not going to be anymore. Mm. And the actor himself, uh, is it Jason Sudeikis? Yes. Yeah. He said that he's eager to put the character down. He wants to move on and do something else. So they definitely won't be anymore. Uh it's not us saying it's welcome then, which is a good thing, I, I think. Like, do mm. it, like, basically, then you're going to have three golden seasons. Uh, yeah. As well, some of the they, best TV we've seen. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> when I saw um, there was a he, there was an article that had come out and Jason Sudeikis had, had mentioned that this was written and planned as a three oh, season. As a trilogy. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. And you figure, um, like, I didn't know this until Ted Lasso started on Apple and I started watching it even late to the game, but mm. he was a, a character that he had created for us, like NBC, I think like when they would do their sports shows. So I didn't even know that. So he's been doing this like for a decade. Wow. Or okay. More. So, yeah. so, so that he, makes sense. <laughs> he's ready to just put it behind him, even mm. though this is probably going to go down as one of the greatest TV characters ever, because he's mm. just, I mean, he's so, so nice and so pure and you so- can't help like even like their moments with nate where he can retaliate with what nate has done but he still just champions nate mm-hmm. and that i think we see a lot of character that we want to be like that we want to be like ted like when i grew up i want to be like ted because that mm-hmm. was a damn fine human being uh, we aspire to be more like ted <laughs> Absolutely. I'm I'm so glad that you got to see this. I think you suck because you got to see this early, but um, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. And it's it's a weekly release again, and it's yeah. 10, episo- 10 episodes. Yeah. Yeah, 10 episodes? Yeah, 10 episodes. No, okay. 12. There's 12 episodes. Oh, 12 episodes. Yeah. Even better. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Even, yeah. I mean, it's, it's typically dead, yeah. like 30 minutes. So Oh, they're like, oh, oh, the ones I watch are like 45, 50. So. Oh, are they really? 
Yeah. Oh, outstanding, even better. Okay, because I was going to say, you know, even though it pisses me off that we have these weekly releases that are short, this yeah. is the series I think because that I, it's, they're wrapping up. They're just mm, kind of putting the story in there. So. Giving more time to it so mm. that they can accurately and, and satisfyingly yeah. put it away. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Cool. C- okay. Cool. Well, that's everything on my list for this week. All right. Well, then, hey, we, we thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget our Patreon opportunities, patreon.com slash the bearded ones, um, where for you can get a dollar, a buck. Nope, a pound. It's a little more than a dollar in the Probably U.S. just because of the, cause you know, it's but it's like a it's, it's like a soda at McDonald's. Mm-hmm. So the it, we've, we really want to make it accessible. And the reason we do that is because the you get you get exclusive content for that it helps to offset the cost of production to do this show um i know it looks like it just shows up on youtube but it's there's actually there's there's more <laughs> there's stuff that goes on and editing and yeah, yeah, and yeah. programs and and the whole yeah. thing so anyway yeah. i mean we still love doing it so don't don't hear that that this is a chore or anything like that no no no, no we no. just um but in exchange, we want to give you uh, exclusive content, and there is a ton of it there, so you can head over and check that out. You can always tweet at us at Best We Watched. Uh, please like, share, subscribe uh, on our YouTube channels. Ruby yes, with the Ruby Tuesday, huh? But oh yes, I said yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, um, I'm Chris with Movies and Munchies on our podcast. The full audio you can listen to that wherever you happen to listen to podcasts. Just search The Best Thing We Watched This Week, and it will pop up. This week, we are talking about a movie that I watched for the first time. Ruben, it's been quite a while since he saw it last. We're also going to cover some entertainment news and the things that we are looking forward to in the coming week, which there are a lot of things coming out in the theater in the so next... So much. Yeah. This, this next month is going to be crazy, I think. Yeah, it's a big month for... For some reason, this March has become a huge month. Monster. No, it's not normally, but... Yeah. no. So got a lot to talk about there. So head over there. We've linked it in the description uh, below to at least one of the outlets. And then you can, but you can search it anyway there. If you do happen to go there also, please rate and review us. That would be huge. Helps it out. With that, hey, we'll see you next week. All right, take care. Bye.